Hi everyone, thanks uh, for turning up. You alright Mark? Hope you're alright. Um, hope everyone's had a good week. Mine's not been too bad on this new schedule. A um, few little tinkering bits, but on the whole, massive. Right, <coughs> excuse me. Cough. What I'll do is basically welcome people in. Hi Chad, you alright mate? Thanks for coming in. And um, basically, what we're going to go through today is uh, how how I quote gutters for gutter clears and how I use Google, Google Earth to help me measure it all up. <coughs> Excuse me. Not what you want that. Uh, so yeah, looks like might as well get started then. So like I said, what we'll go through is how I quote gutter clears using Google Earth. And what I'm going to cover is basically why it's a good idea to always quote in person. Always ask, do the gutters overflow and where? So we'll go through um, why I do that. Look where the gullies on the roof are. If you're not sure, I'll go through that as well. Find out any potential hard to reach areas and also how to measure up using Google Earth and always to send a quote afterwards. So what we'll go through first then is basically why it's a good idea to always quote in person. Uh, the reason why I find it's always good to quote in person is if it's someone you've not met before, they've not met you before, it's a good place where you can weigh each other up and see if you're a good fit. And um, People want to get to know you as well, so I, I just find it's easier to do it in person. Plus, if I do anything through an email or a phone call or even text messages, there's always something I find I've got a question or I forgot to mention something, whereas when I tend to meet someone in person and you just get chatty and slows down. You're having a conversation, so you're kind of like throwing questions at each other. And if you forget something, you can say it all before you leave the person's property as well. Uh, so I always find it easier to always do a quote in person. Plus, it's all right using Google Earth, but there's not places you can always see or parts of the building you can't see from Google Earth. Walking around with a customer, uh, you get to ask questions, get to see things a bit better and take further things into account that you otherwise wouldn't get from um, Google Earth. So moving on then, why I always ask, do the gutters overflow and where? The reason why I always ask this question is because I've learned when the customers ask you to come around and clear out the gutters, there's normally a problem. So it's been heavy downpour, bits of water starting to come over or dripping, leaking from somewhere. And the immediate thought is that the gutters are blocked and need clearing so hence why they've called you now the last thing i want to do is especially if it's a big building go and give a big quote to find that i'm going to empty all the gutters but then i get a phone call later that they must still be blocked because they've still got a problem of water overflowing so that's why i always ask these questions do they overflow and where sometimes when they show you where the problem is or where it's overflowing you might find it's just it's the lowest point in the gutter and that's why it's coming over it's just the sheer volume of water coming off the roof gutters can't cope it's the lowest point out it comes or if it's near where there's um the downpipes then you know highly likely there may be something blocking the downpipe especially when there's a plug of a plant coming out mm. excuse me or near where i'm going to mention the gullies they're also pinch points as well uh, sometimes it could just be something simple like a tennis ball um, or it could just be that there's in the union or the joints when they keep saying it's dripping then you can suggest that it's that that needs replacing. Um, obviously I'd still go up there and use a camera to do a quote for them so I can rule out there's nothing in there or there is and if I turn sometimes they're surprised when they say look there's nothing in there but the reason why you're getting the leaks I think is because of this. Uh, me personally don't do gut repairs I've tried that but I find you're going to lose too much time in your van driving to find a hardware shop, trying to find the right bit to come back and then do it. It's now nah, I've, I've got someone I know uh, and I pass the work on to him basically. So yeah, always ask these questions because I'm always thinking, why have I been called really to clear out a gutter? The other thing as well, when you're meeting in person and ask these questions is sometimes they get confused. When I say, do you clean gutters? I always say there's two types of gutter services I do. One is a gutter clear, where I remove all the obstructions inside your gutter, like your leaves and moss. Or I can clean the outside the gutters, including the faces and the soffits, so I'll get all the green off and get them nice and white or whatever colour they are. So I try and also make that pretty clear before I start uh, and then go on. 
Okay, so next slide moving on for you. He says, wrong button. Okay, the reason why I look where the gullies on the roof are, um, again, I've said these sometimes can be pinch points. If you're not sure what a gully is, when I move on to uh, Google Earth and go through how I can use that, I'll try and point them out, but I think everyone knows what a gully is anyway. It's basically where you've got two different angles of a roof meeting, and then in the middle, there would be like a small little groove, and that's the gully. So you've got to think there's water running off one roof, water running off another, and it's going to be direct into this gully, which then runs down to your gutter. And on the gutter, it's generally where you've got excuse me, a corner. So it'll run down to this corner, for example. It's always in the corners and the gutters you'll see plants growing out of as well. And that's because all the grit off the tiles or loose moss and so on will find its way into this gully and then come down and it collects in that corner on the gutter. And then it's nice breeding ground for plants to grow out of. And again, that's when sometimes your customers think all the gutters are full, but they've only got them little bits standing up there. And you might find that's the only part that actually needs removing. The rest of it's pretty clear. But you won't know that till you come to do the job. Or you're going to go and do the quote using a camera or getting up there with a ladder, for example, and taking pictures with your phone. That's what I used to do. So I always try and find out where the gullies are. Again, you can step back um, looking up on the roof to work out where the gullies are or using Google Earth before you've got to the house. You've kind of got to lay out and the measurements in your mind before you start so you've already kind of got a quote quote sorted anyway um also in the gullies you can get obstructions because i found a lot of the time you get like the cement um break away and then it gets into the gullies and then it holds up the moss which can block stuff up and then it just back loads up and then there's tons of stuff in there um but as well as clearing out the gutters i always point out i will clear out the gullies as well because to me it's all part of the system and if there's any lumps of cement that's come off and away i will bring that down and show them as well uh, just so they're aware and then probably say try and find a roofer who will sort that out for you so that's why i try and find out where the gullies are look for all these pinch points and problems and um, like i said with the stuff running down the gully into the gutter when it blocks there that can stop the water which i'll explain later moving around to another part of the gutter where you'll have the downpipe and that sometimes can cause where the water's overflowing so that links up with I always ask is there any water running off the gutters or leaks and show me where okay moving on then to find potential hard to reach areas so not trying to teach you to suck eggs but obviously you've got to plan around how you're going to get access into the gutters so if you're using a ladder there's places where your ladder can go and there's places where your ladder can't go. And obviously you're looking for potential problems as well where your ladder needs to be at a safe angle, for example, but it can't because there's a bush in the way. So you're looking for potential hazards or problems to you and then you're looking for potential solutions to get around them. So when you're working off a ladder, good thing is to have a, a pole that you can extend out or a Harris pole. And you can put these tools on there like pro gutter tools and they fit different profiles of gutters so again, when you can't get your ladder to Pacific area, you use your pole and the pole gutter to reach to those areas and drag the stuff towards you. Um, when you're using your gutter vax, which I absolutely love and I fall in love with mine every time I use it. I'm so glad I got that. Um, again, you're trying to think high angles. Can you get them with the poles you've got? What nozzles should you be using for these hard to reach areas? Um, sometimes it could be a... a an outbuilding or an extension in the way but it may have a flat roof and then ask is it okay if i get on the roof and then you can use um standing up from there if you can get your gutter vac onto it for example or do you have to just go old school use your ladders and do that section by hand uh, me personally find even though i've got a very good it's a sky vac industrial 85 um gutter vac i still do fall back to my ladders so i still have all the kit i use in the van with me gutter vac when I used to do it all by ladders. The combination of the two, there's no excuse why you can't clear the gutters out completely for your customer. And there's sometimes there's some things your gutter vac just ain't gonna lift something out because it's stuck and wedged. So you just use your ladder, get up there, it'd be quicker and easier, lift it out by hand, and then crack on with the gutter vac. Wrong key. <laughs> I keep doing that. Okay, moving on to measuring up. 
uh, using Google Earth. If you go on to uh, Google Earth, um, obviously I'm in the UK, so I type Google Earth instead of going to googleearth.com.uk and basically it takes you to this page. So I'm going to launch open Google Earth for you, if this will work, yep. And then it loads up onto a screen. Obviously it's going to take it near your location. There's these little icons down here. Uh, obviously that's for search. When you hover them, it's going to tell you what it's going to do, but basically, basically you can use this bottom one here and that's your measuring tool. So rather than putting in an address, I'm just going to put in my village, which is Parson Drove. It was already on it anyway. <laughs> so here it is, it's opening up. You get over here on the right, if you put in a house detail, it'll be a picture of the house and the address. And when you press this little X up here, all this is going to stop spinning round. So there we go. Hopefully once you've got the address on there for your house, you'll still have the marker. Now at the bottom of the screen here, you've got your plus and minus. So that's so you can zoom in and zoom out. You can use your fingers when you're using a mobile phone because you can use the mobile phone app as well, which I find handy. So when I'm at the customer's house, even if it's a potential customer, I'm using Squeegee to get the customer in the Squeegee system or the app. And then I can use Google Earth as well while I'm walking around to do my measurements. But that only works if you've got a signal. Uh, so that's why sometimes I do this beforehand um, if I've got the time at home the evening before just to make my life a bit easier and I've already got like measurements in my head for example and then obviously when I'm meeting them in person just going through stuff and fine tuning it so I'm just going to zoom in a bit that's obviously too much <laughs> I've got a bug okay squared that away because uh, I've pre-planned this obviously okay got this earth here so it's obviously where you are but to the bottom on the left, you've got a compass. You can click on that and then use that to rotate and spin around um, Google Earth itself. You've got this 2D or 3D. So for example, that's in 2D. If I click it again, it's going to go into 3D. Click it back, it's going to go to 2D. Uh, it depends what part of the map it is. Cause sometimes it's really effective, but I normally find that in the cities. But somewhere like I am in the sticks, it just <laughs> doesn't look any different. Um, you've got this person here. So that's for when you're doing street view. So obviously you can hover it. Where the blue lines are, that's where I can drop the person. And then it's going to zoom in street level. And then obviously I can rotate around, use the arrows here, for example, uh, just to move me around the street to get to the house that I want, for example. So we'll go for an example of a gully. If I could zoom in, yeah. Excuse me, right. Where the mouse is going along here, that's the gully. So it's between two different roof profiles. So you can see this small triangle a bit, and it'll be the same on this one. It's going to be a lot of waterfall being directed off the two roofs into this gully. All the grit on the tiles will work its way into this gully and then come down to the bottom bit here, which is where I'm on about the corners of the gutter system. So there's your downpipe. And you'll get a lot of silt come down into here. And these points are always where you're going to find plants growing out of it. And that's where your customer's going to see them and sometimes think the whole system may be covered. Uh, sometimes it looks as worse than what it actually is, but it can also be the other way around. What will happen is as well, all the water coming down the roof this side to the right hand side of that gully can't then flow when there's an obstruction there down to this downpipe. So it's going to backflow up and then start overfilling. So again, when you ask the customer, where is there any overflow of the water or any leaks? That's where it helps you build a picture before you even get up there and have a look of perhaps what it might be like or what it could be. Um, so that's your gully sorted. And again, if you click on the walking man, it will just zoom back out. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in because using the roofs, say for example, this house we were looking at was a potential customer and I'm at home the evening before or sat in a van 20 minutes before and I've just had a quick sandwich. I'm looking at the roof profile and you can see this line here, that's your ridge tiles and you've got another one here. So on the end of the ridge tile on both sides here and there, what you're going to have is a gable end. Now gable ends sometimes have nothing on there. Sometimes they'll have barge boards or faces and soffits. When you're going for a gutter clear, you know there's going to be no gutters there. So that's a place you not need to measure in. Excuse me. 
But if you're going to do facial soffits and guts, for example, you need to know whether there's any barge boards or faces and soffits on the gable ends to account for in your quote or not. So again, going back to street view, if I can drop myself in there, I'll just zoom in for you. You'll probably work it out. So there's your ridge tiles all going along the top. And then because you can't see anything else except where the ridge tile is, we guessed these were the gable ends, which you can see. And I can see from here, there is nothing. It's all brick. There are no barge boards or faces and soffits. So if I was doing a quote for faces, soffits and gutters, that's not something I would uh, include. All right, cheers, Jed. Um, let me see what I can sort out. It should be shown. Oh, I know why. It's because it's not. Yeah. The reason why the mouse pointer is not shown is I'm not using a screen share off the internet. I'm using eCam and it's using a web widget. So that's something I've just found out. Apologies for that. Learn something new. Every day is a school day. <laughs> Um, but anyway, you can see from using Google Earth is a good tool to work out on the roof profile. The more roofs you clean, the more you're looking on Google Earth, the more you'll learn it all. Um, so yeah, that's where I found out gable ends. So you know if you're doing a gutter clear, there's going to be no gutters in there to measure, for example. And if you're doing facial soffits and gutters using Street View as well. or when you, That's why it's another good reason why I always um, try and quote in person so I get a walk around because... You don't always get to see everything on Google Earth, so I can rule them out. Okay, I'll just zoom up and then zoom in for you. So again, that's that ridge tile, straight edge here, so that's your gable end. But what you can see between this ridge tile and then this one running 90 degrees, what you'll have down diagonally down that direction, because you can't see the mouse pointer, you can work out where the gullies are, which is the gully that I was showing you before, so hopefully that makes sense. So we see that line on the roof coming down towards the gutter line. You know that's going to be a gully and you can see you've got one on the opposite side. So it's generally, generally where two different roofs are going to meet. There will be gullies running down or like dormer windows always have gullies. So you can work out that those areas, not on the gable ends, are going to have gutters. So that's how you know where to measure. I'm going to have to work a different way around this for you guys, I believe. Um, just let me know if this shows up because I'm just going to use how to measure using this building and we'll just see. Okay, on the left hand side, going to the bottom, you've got just there like a ruler and um, that's what you're going to use. So when you click on that, it'll open up the box on the right hand side and you can change that for meters or to feet, for example. Using this tool, you can measure the whole edges of the roof and then it will give you its um, square feet. And also you can use it in our case, we're going to use it as a straight measurement because what we want to do is measure the gutters. So all I need to do is once I've pressed it, is drop a cursor and I'm dropping it on the point I want to start my measurement from. It's not doing it in here, but if I was doing it through a web browser, you'd have a circle with little lines so it's easy to aim and then you can fine tunely put it on where you want to go. And then you just move your cursor, which you can't see, to the other corner of where you want to go. And if I tap it on there, you can see now, hopefully it's shown you the line. But when you move your cursor along, when you're doing it in a web browser, you can actually see the lines. And then you just click it when you're on where you want and you can change direction. So that's how you can do different shapes. And you'll see on the top right, this has come up with 12.29 meters. Okay. And then if I press the X in that box, basically it will close that off and then I can remeasure. So once you've got the measurements down, either do them in your head. Cheers, Chad. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so you're going to have to write down these individual measure measurements because you're going to have to add them together. So that's 12.29 or sometimes I just round it to 12. Okay, or well, just remember it's a little bit extra and I may need to add an extra meter on at the end. Whatever works for you. So 12.3 in my head. And then all I'm going to do is repeat the process and I'm going to measure from where I can see there's a gully down to the edge of the building. Hopefully you can see that now. So that's 6.7 plus 12.3. So that's 19 meters. Just got to remember that in my head. Uh, you can see hopefully where I did the first white dot, that's starting where I can see a gully comes down. 
because we worked out where the gable end is. So we know there's a gable end that side, there's no gutters. So I'm starting where the gully is, which is where your gutter is going to start and then to the other gable end, if that makes sense. And we've got 19 meters. Okay. I'm going to repeat that process for this last L shape where we've got the gully on the opposite side. So I start from one end, move up to where the gully is and then go to the other corner, which is where that downpipe was. Okay. And that's 11.2. So we said 19, 20. So I just said that I'd call it 30 meters of gutters using Google Earth, which isn't bad. Um, and again, using Google Earth, I've got a, in my head a little map of how the roof is, the layout of the gutters. I already know where the gullies are. So you will be armed with this information before you get to your customer. Then obviously through the general chit chat, just saying hello, being nice. We're allowing them to meet you and everything. Um, and then ask them questions, you know, where is it leaking? Because you're trying to find out, like I said, what, why have they called you around? And then basically you can go from there. So you've got your measurements. So in my head, it's 30 meters. Um, some of you do it differently. Some people charge per side, but houses are different shapes and sizes. So we charge by the meter. And then obviously I'm going to times 30 by how much I charge per meter. And that's my price in my head. Now, when you do the job, if you find it goes really, really easy, really quickly, and it's just a complete dream, obviously I'd be mortified at charging the customer my original quote because I have took a hell of a short time. So what I'd be working out in my head then is I'll be deciding, shall I, because this is going really quick, I think I'm going to have to charge an hourly rate so they're better off and I don't look like I'm a, a thief doing daylight robbery. Uh, and then basically I keep my eye on the time and go, I don't make my final decision till the end because you might find one side goes a dream and another side is completely hard. There's so many things involved with clearing out gutters, even when you've got a gutter vac, um, you've got different nozzles, you've got the roof tiles, they could be too close to the gutter, so there's small gaps to get in, it's really, really hard. So it's just like all the problems you've had doing with your hands and you're cutting your fingers on the roof tiles. Same with the gutter vac, your nozzle's not fitting in, but you want to get all the stuff out. And then you've got to keep going up to double check and you basically find a way till something works and one section of the reef is always harder than another um, so it's a funny old thing until you get to the end so quote by the meter is what i do give them the quote but i also say if i do it really really quick i will take money off and then i just kind of work out an hourly rate because they're going to be returning customers is what you want regular work and also they start speaking to all their friends and families and you're going to get customers that way. Uh, so look after your customers, customers look after you. Hopefully that makes sense. What I'm going to do now is just come out of here and try and find another roof for you using Google Earth. This one here in the middle where you can see there's solar panels is slightly different to the roof we we're looking at. And just in case you're wondering, um, I price a certain amount per meter for say ground floor, floor levels, um, like your bungalows. And then as you start to go up a story, so you're going to go first floor, I then add extra and so on for each height. So again, you don't see that all from Google Earth. Again, working around, walking around with your customer rather, you can then see these things a bit better and then make certain points or measurements or notes so you can finalize your quote. Okay. Um, going back to this roof anyway. You can see hopefully there's a long straight line in the middle going this direction and that's your ridge tile and then you'll see going off at that angle and towards the rear we've got some more ridge tiles and you've almost got like a triangle on each side of the actual roof itself so when you see these ridge tiles going down at an angle like that they're not gullies so there's no gullies on this property and what you'll find is on all four sides of that roof will be gutters so there's no uh, if you look to the house above it you can see you've got pointy ends and that's where you're going to have uh, your gable ends and then to the one below it with the solar panels no gable ends so therefore it's going to be gutters all the way around on four sides all right Ched good question um, yeah just a flat fee per meter is what we do and it doesn't matter how full they are uh, the reason why I do this is a bit like you were saying to me the other night is when you start turning up to do a quote 
and if you've got your gutter vac camera and you're having to put it on a pole you're going to walk around you're trying to look inside and see everything um and sometimes it's hard to see on that monitor exactly what's in there because sometimes you get dried lichen and you're starting to think it's mud and it's not and there's nothing in there uh, the quote can take a lot of time so i just go in for a flat fee but tell them i'll always show them everything i've got out the gutter at the end so they see everything that's come out and so therefore if i haven't got a lot in there and it hasn't taken me a lot of time i would then charge an hourly rate you've got to remember though you still had to turn up you're using your fuel um, you're not doing other jobs where you could be earning good money so you've got to factor all that in as well. And if you're using a gutter vac, you may have your own generator, so you're using your own uh, fuel. So yeah, I always go flat rate. doesn't matter whether it's full of stuff or not. I make that decision on the job. And if it's gone really quickly, I'll do an hourly rate. So it's the equivalent of what it costs. I'd make cleaning windows, basically. Um, and if it's obviously full, it's going to take me time. Therefore, it's my quote. If it's one of them jobs where I go over time, well then that's that's my problem. I just stick to my quote. Uh, it's, that's simple as that. So I stick with a quote or I make it less. I never add on. And you just chalk it up to experience. Some things go well, some don't. There we go. So let someone else All right, Cheers, Ched. A double hip roof. Never knew that. Um, there we go. <laughs> I can impress my customers now. So again, using Google Earth, find out whether it's got gable ends or not, or it's a double hip roof. Um, and again, using your tool now, you're going to find, obviously, measuring around on all four corners. So I'll start on the top left. I'm not going to be exact pinpoint accuracy here, but I'll just go quite quick. There we go. Uh, you'll see the perimeter in the box, 46.51 metres, or the area, uh, which is your square metres. Okay, so that's 46 or 47 metres for your gutters so you can see roofs like that one are going to have a lot of coverage in terms of clearing out gutters for you and uh, there's something else I'm going to show you yeah no that's pretty much it okay always send a quote so when you've turned up you've done your homework beforehand using google earth or you're using your mobile phone app providing you got a signal <laughs> you're walking around with a customer you're talking having a general chit chat Asking the questions, like I said, um, where does it overflow at all? Have you had any problems? Um, things like this. Working out where the gullies are, looking at potential problems, hard to reach areas, solutions to get around them. Um, once you've sort of like got what you need or made any notes because you've worked out on Google Earth, you couldn't see certain areas and then haven't seen it slightly different. So there's a higher levels of gutters. So you're going to charge it a little bit more for that section, for example. Basically, I'll just tell them I will send you a quote. So I don't feel under pressure to blurt out a number. I can go away and actually think hard on it because you're always going to try and give your customer the best price. When I say the best price, I'm not talking the lowest price going. You're trying to be as fair as possible to you, but as fair as possible to the customer. And then again, just do confirmatory questions basically to understand what they were after is what you're thinking and then i will go home that night and tell them i will send them a quote and everything will be broken down um because you might find they want to do one side not the other or how much is it for both so i'll break it completely so got all their choices choices there like um and then that's when i'd send a quote uh, because of your squeegee app i do the quote on there it saves me quotes, so I've got something to refer to rather than jumbles of bits of paper and I'm searching in different drawers and different notebooks trying to find this piece of paper. I've got all the details there. I also tell them when I send them a quote, not to respond straight away, sit on it for a few days, go through with the other half, what you think, go and get some other quotes or whatever. Um, but just please let me know if you're going to accept it or decline it by using the buttons which are on the quotes if they decline it i said it tells me and if they accept it it tells me then i know i need to convert it or book it into a job and i'll get back in touch reference dates basically um so that's how i quote the gutter clears and use google earth it's a quite a good tool before i used to go around with tape measures and then find out the tape measures are way too small then i've used the tape measure wheels but there's always like wheelie bins, bushes, hedges, stuff in the way to do a complete straight line. And when I found out how to do use Google Earth, well, that answered everything really. Um, so yeah, it's a great tool. 
and you can go pre-armed with the layout with the gutters in your head before you get there as well and you've got a rough price already uh, in your head all right i hope that was of some hope to you hope to you use to you um i don't know if anyone's got any other questions for q a time um so yeah thanks for tuning in thank you i try and do these lives every week this is only my second one and i've just learned something new apart from a double hip roof that if you don't do a screen share in the browser people can't see the mouse and the mouse clicks and yeah thanks very much get back to you soon thanks for tuning in stay safe and i hope it's kind of helping you out with gutter clears or using google earth thanks everyone see you later